Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video of the beercade. This is the arcade that I made. Um, it is still a work in progress, but as it is, uh, at the moment, it is a fully functional arcade cabinet that plays thousands of games and also pours beer out the side. So what do you want to take a break and top off your beer? Nice cold beer coming out the side of the beer cade. So I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of all the different components I used uh, and pretty much the price breakdown of or the cost breakdown of each of them. Alright, so if you're interested in making your own arcade cabinet, you should know that uh, the biggest pieces are pretty much just wood. Um, but when it comes to electronics, there are a few major pieces that you're going to need. Uh, one of them being a controller. So right here, I'm using the X-Arcade. Um, it's an um, all-in-one controller. It's for two players. It works with PC, works with uh, emulators. Um, and you can get adapters to make it work with standalone consoles as well. Uh, this I got used for about $70. Um, there is a new one that's called the Tank Stick. It has the um, uh, directional ball in the middle. But if you're, um, you're going to make your own arcade cabinet, you can choose to piece your own um, joysticks. Uh, you can buy the button separately. You can buy the joystick separately. Uh, you can make your own board. I've seen people do some amazing things with that. Um, or you can already do, um, or you can just buy kits that have all the pieces that you need and just kind of put them together. So when it comes to controllers, it is an expensive part of this build. Uh, so expect to pay right around 100 bucks for this. The next big thing is the screen. Uh, now if you want that authentic look, you may want to buy one of those tube TVs, the older ones. But if you do that, the problem is you're going to need to buy extra adapters to make it work with the Raspberry Pi, which is used to control this whole thing. Uh, what I got here is a 24 inch, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, flat screen, I got it off of Craigslist for about $40. Um, the nice thing about that is is it comes with the speakers that used to be on the sides. And it's extremely easy to hook up because you just use one HDMI cable for everything. Now when it comes to the sound, uh, you can buy standalone speakers. You can buy a really nice system. But I don't really see a point of that because you're going to be playing older versions of the games. And you don't really get that full dynamic range of sound. Um, you're not going to get those deep sounds. You're just going to get that 8, 16, 32-bit sounds. So the um, regular TV speakers work just fine. In my case, what I did is, um, because I wanted it to be as narrow as possible, I took the sides off and I put them up there. And then I had to buy these speaker grills, which were about $8 on eBay, I believe. Now the major component of this build is going to be right up here, and that is the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is actually the unit that runs this whole thing. So you may have seen other um, arcade cabinets if you're looking at those videos. A lot of them use a PC or maybe even a gaming console. Um, all that is replaced by this one tiny little Raspberry Pi. So the unit that I'm using is the Raspberry Pi B+. There are different ones on the market. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. The B+, Plus, I think, cost me um, $35 to $40. Let's get a better look of the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's not that many components to this. You pretty much buy it as a standalone unit. Uh, the one thing that you're going to have to buy, or one of the things that you're going to have to buy, is a micro SD card. Um, that is pretty much your memory and your RAM. Everything runs off of it, so I would recommend um, at least a Class 6. I'm running a Class 10. Um, I'm also using a 32 gig. You can go I think as big as 32 not sure about the 64 it may not be compatible with the Raspberry Pi just yet uh, but when it comes to memory don't go too small because you are gonna load a lot of games on here uh, the white cable is actually to power so to power your Raspberry Pi you are gonna want a 2 amp power source um, you can use a nice cell phone charger as long as you make sure it is a 2 amp and then you can see that the HDMI hookup, that's for my TV. And then over here you have some USB ports and you also have the uh, Ethernet port for, um, for Internet. So on this side, a couple of extras that I added to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm using a that, the little dongle right there. That's the Wi-Fi dongle. So I'm, I don't have Internet wired to it. I have it wirelessly because of that. 
Uh, that thing cost me about um, six to eight dollars online. I think I found it on slickdeals.net. Over here, one of the USBs is for the X-Arcade because it hooks up through USB. And then another one is the wireless adapter for this keyboard mouse combo, which comes in really, really handy because this is uh, basically running on Linux. And if you want to modify anything or you can, if you want to mess with it, you're going to need a keyboard and mouse. You can plug in a regular keyboard or mouse, but this little beast is awesome. It's fairly inexpensive. It's about $20. I'll try to post the link of it below. Um, I think I got it on Amazon or eBay. It's rechargeable batteries and it lasts forever. Now for the software, the software that I'm using on this is called PyPlay. Um, I'll post the links below. It is a free software. It's open source. You can go on the website. You can download it, install it on your SD card. Um, it comes preloaded uh, with different uh, emulators. It does not come preloaded with games for those emulators, but it does come with Cave Story. So if you just want to jump in and play some games, Cave Story does come included. Um, to get the ROMs, if you're familiar with uh, emulators, then you're probably familiar with websites where you can go to download those ROMs. I'm not going to share any, but if you guys want to share some in the, um, in the comments below, feel free to do so. Um, I actually downloaded game packs off different websites. So for main for all, I have about 86 games. You can see for Atari, I have thousands of games. For Genesis, thousands of games. Um, it plays PlayStation 1 not that well, though. Uh, Super Nintendo, I got a, about 100 games. Neo Geo, about 100 games. So there are different emulators. I've hit some. And the, um, the look of this is actually a theme that I'm running uh, that's made by one of, the, um, one of the contributors for this software. And it's awesome. It's called the Tron theme. So the software is completely free. Uh, the developers that did a great job. I want to thank you guys for the um, for the hard work, the great work that you did. And I want to say keep up the great work because if you can see down here, it says update PyPlay. That's because they are constantly working on it and they're making it better and better. Um, to give you guys an idea of what this looks like, if I go into, let's say, uh, Super Nintendo, I have a list of games on the side and it actually shows me the... Um, image if available for these games so that is super awesome and it's also very very easy to use very user friendly um, I have it oh there we go I launched the game the games start right up there's very minimal loading time I have it hooked up to this to be start you know play a new game I don't know which game I chose, but that's basically how it works. Now up here, I've also wired um, a little control unit for myself. I have power for the TV if I want to turn the TV on and off, and I have the volume buttons. But basically what I did over here is I have one major power button. So when I press that, um, it actually cycles the power of the Raspberry Pi and starts the booting process. So that's all I pressed. Now the Raspberry Pi started booting, and I actually have it wired to where the Raspberry Pi, as part of the boot process, will turn my TV on. Let's see if it does that. Give it a second. There it goes. So the screen just turned on, and then we'll see a video. Come on. There we go. And then we see the, um, the Pi Play boot video um, you can mess with this you can throw in another boot animation uh, which I tried a couple different ones and then I just went back to this um, it doesn't take too long to boot it takes about a minute or so um, if you don't wanna see the animation you can actually just see the script that's running in the background the reason they have the animation there is for it to look a little more professional which I think it does it looks great uh, it makes it look more like an official cabinet and then once it boots, you'll see my loading image. There's the script. So then it goes to my loading image. There it goes. And then it goes to the home screen, which is your list of emulators, 
and you can go into the games and start playing. There it goes. Now for the cabinet. Uh, the cabinet is built of 3 quarter inch MDF. Um, MDF is what they use for all the cabinets. If you go to the, um, if you go to the arcade, all of them are going to be built off MDF. The paint I used um, is an oil-based oil paint because if the beer splashes, you can easily wipe that off. I'm still going to get um, an aluminum drip tray there that it covers um, the actual wall so it doesn't splash. But if you use the oil-based paint, it's really easy to maintain. Uh, the black is not oil-based. Um, I would recommend that you use all oil-based paints. If you're going to build a cabinet from scratch, I would recommend building a frame first to make sure everything's sturdy and then build around it, build a casing around it. Uh, that's not what I did, so I had to go back in and make some reinforcements, but I would definitely recommend that. And then to finish it off, you can see I have this T-molding. It's called T-molding. It's very, uh, very cheap. Uh, for about $10, you'll get more than enough to do the whole cabinet. Um, the way you put this in is you get a router bit uh, that's called a T-slotting bit cut out a, sl a thin groove and then you just pop this in so it gives it a nice authentic look of course you can't have an arcade cabinet without a nice marquee up here um, I actually designed this myself I took a bunch of wallpapers cut them down uh, made this nice long image and got it printed locally um, for about $35 um, it's printed on paper that actually lets light shine through as you can see um, and then I have it on some hinges because that's where I hold all of my electronics. So right back here I have the control unit. That is actually the power uh, unit for my LED strip, which I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then I have the Raspberry Pi right there as well. Um, to hold this, I have three pieces of MDF. As you can see, three thinner pieces. And it just kind of sandwiches two, two pieces of glass in there and the, um, the image behind it so if I turn this on let me see if you guys can see what the light looks like so with the lights turned on you can see the LED strip I still need to secure it it's a little bit cleaner this was more of a test fit and then I just left it as is um, and then it shines the light through it doesn't show that great on video but it's definitely changing colors now for my marquee back here it looks a little bit messy and out of place but the reason I actually have the Raspberry Pi right in the middle is if you turn the lights off, you'll see it actually lights up the X. So that's pretty cool. And now if I turn on the um, lights, you can see what it actually looks like in the dark. So it's actually set to change colors to um, just switch through different colors, fade through different ones. But it's actually based on sound. So if I make a sound, so if I tap it, it's making that sound, or if you're playing games and just hitting all the buttons, it's actually switching through the different colors. So that's why I opted out for the um, light strip instead of just regular light bulb. Now if we look down here at the bottom, this is where all the beer is stored. So this is a full-blown kegerator. If we look inside, I have a sixth keg, which is about five gallons of uh, yingling at the moment. Off to the side, we have compressed CO2. And we got the line leading to my faucet off to the side. You can kind of see that. So when you buy a kegerator, uh, this is one of the most expensive pieces. I bought this one for about $200. Um, the, there's going to be a faucet right up top. I had to reroute that because I'm going to use it because I wanted to use it on the side. If you're new to kegerators, the most important thing is get the pressure right, get the temperature right, make sure you have enough, um, line of hose because if you have anything, uh, too short, then you're going to get a lot of foam. So I have about 10 feet and it works just fine for me. To route my hose, my beer off to the side. I used a tube, a thicker tube, to um, route the little tube through. That way you can get some airflow going through it. And then I used uh, foam insulation, and then I used in insulating tape on both ends. So you can kind of see that. 
and it keeps the beer chilly from the first to the last pour. Now for some extras. If we look on the Raspberry Pi, um, you see these crazy crown looking things. Those are heat sinks. I got those for, I think it was five to eight dollars on eBay. Um, you can see there's no fans on the Raspberry Pi. It's extremely quiet. Well, that helps um, keep the temperatures down. Um, and that's also why I have the back open because uh, it gives it a nice ventilation. Um, that white wire coming off the Raspberry Pi, I actually have it set up to where that goes to the control unit of the TV. So this right here is um, what I took apart, this right here, and I wired all my buttons here. And that white one actually goes to the power, and then I included in the code for it to turn my TV on and off during the boot sequences. And this gives you a nice look of how it looks behind here. I have a couple of supports um, to keep it all sturdy. There's my beer line. Over here I have a power strip. It's a little messy, it could be cleaned up a little bit. But as you can see, there's not too many components required to make this thing work. So very simple, a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to use. I hope, uh, I, hope I inspire you guys to try and make your own. Definitely a fun project. And um, it did come out to a little more than what I anticipated. But like I said, the major cost was were the kegerator, the the um, joystick, the rest were just little uh, bits and pieces that kind of add up. But now I have my own beer cade that plays thousands of games, and it definitely keeps my beer cool, always handy. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out below. I will try to post as many links as possible to everything, and if I forgot anything else, I'll throw it in there as well.